Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, happy Easter week to you, or Easter, Thanksgiving week. Jeez, I wish it were Easter. Thanksgiving week to you. Well, the year's gone fast, that's for sure. Um, uh, obviously excited about uh, our win on Saturday. The guys uh, played their tails off. Uh, it, it wasn't perfect by any means, but uh, the, just how hard they played. Uh, they were able to make some plays in critical situations that um, enabled us to uh, always keep the lead. And I think as a coaching staff, we talked about that, of, of keeping that lead, uh, even though it was, you know, started two score, then down to one score, we were able to keep that lead was uh, significant, I think, from a confidence standpoint with the guys. And then we were able to, to finish the game. That was probably the thing that I was excited about for our offense is uh, with whatever four plus minutes left to be able to, to grind that clock out. Uh, and not give the ball back to a really uh, high-powered offense was um, was really good. So uh, obviously excited about that. And, and coming back here, uh, no school this week uh, with the holiday. And so uh, the guys are able to, to take care of their bodies probably a little bit better. Uh, they're not in and out of classes. They've still got some classwork I'm sure they have to catch up on, but they're able to get a few more treatments and cold tubs and warm tubs and, and those things to try to get their body back for, for Saturday for senior day because we're really excited. We're going to honor 27 great seniors that uh, have had a huge impact uh, on Kansas State football, a huge impact on, uh, on my life and our coaches as far as uh, allowing us into their lives uh, for this last year. And that's never easy for a senior to have a coaching change. And these guys have embraced us and uh, so excited for, for those guys to have a special week. So that will open it up. I could, I could be wrong on the numbers, but Lance Robinson, I think, had played 24 snaps on defense before this game, then played 75 against Tech. Just curious about how he handled that workload. His thoughts on his. Yeah. I thought he played exceptionally well, and uh, Lance has been a very good special teams player for us and was behind A.J. and Walt uh, on the depth chart uh, and, and even Kiwi a little bit, so he was right around our fourth corner. And then when we when we lost A.J., um, you know, we put a little bit more pressure on, on Lance to perform better at practice, to have an opportunity to, to get on the field. And we were going to play him a significant amount of snaps regardless of what happened in, in the game on Saturday. Saturday. And sure enough, we lose um, Walt uh, early on in the game. And so Lance has got to play every snap, basically. Uh, but he was in really good shape. He hadn't missed any practices, hadn't been dinged up, probably fresher than most guys are. And so I thought uh, um, he had an exceptionally good game. And, and great for him from a confidence boost because he's just a redshirt freshman and so for us moving forward helps us to know that uh, there's another guy we can count on for the future. Coach, you kind of touch on this in your opening comments, but after you, you keep saying you see the progress, you see the progress, and after two weeks of it not translating to a victory, how important was it for this team to get the reward to kind of get some more forward? Uh, it's part of that process that you don't want to just put so much pressure on the guys to say, man, you have to win. You know, that, that, then they're never going to play very good. I, I've, I've seen that before where somebody says, you have to win this game. Typically you don't because you're putting all that undue pressure on themselves. It's just, I think, reassuring those guys of what we're seeing as coaches and what I'm seeing overall because I, I go to both ends on, on practice, offense and defense, that I do see really good progress and we are getting better that, guys, it, it, it's going to come out and, and show itself some Saturday. I just know it is, and it, and it has. You guys have seen that as well as I have when we, were, when we won a few of them in a row there, uh, that to stay the course and continue to believe. And I think when you, when you have adversity and you lose a game or lose a game or two like we did in, in a row, <clears throat> I think the thing that first thing that goes is your confidence and belief. Like, come on, can we really do this? And, and us as coaches continuing to harp on, yeah, guys, we're not that far away, and continue to believe and uh, uh, I just really enjoyed the, the long weekend we had with those guys. Probably the best thing we had was a 6 o'clock game because it allowed us more time with those guys to go through walkthrough, to go through notes and stuff at the hotel on Saturday uh, and, and get them truly believing that, hey, we were going to find a way. I believe in the statement that your record says who you are. Yeah. I was stayed at 7-4. and four. This is a really good football team that – I don't think that record fully regret uh, shows how yeah. they can be. 
they've, they've lost a couple of close games that I, that I know of. I, I remember I remember watching the Baylor game or the end of the Baylor game. They had a chance to win, and I think we, we got home in time one time to see the end of the Oklahoma game. So they're always in games. Um, but it's an extremely well-coached football team. Uh, Matt Campbell does a phenomenal job uh, with the players, and his staff does a great job. So much respect for Matt. And the players believe and buy into what – what they're being taught and they defensively they're just so sound they don't miss fits they run to the football extremely well they're physical and then offensively I, I'm just so impressed with Brock Purdy I think he's a phenomenal football player that uh, I love watching as we watch tape and stuff uh, I'm not going to probably like watching him live as much but he's a fun guy to watch because he just makes plays all over the field do you see some similarities between how Matt Campbell's teams play and what their identity is and what you want your program to do? Yeah, Matt's just done it uh, for a longer period at, at this level than than what we have here. But uh, I, I, you know, just the fact that they're they're disciplined, they're really physical. Um, the guys believe in what they're doing, all the things that we're trying to. But you could say myself, you any coach. I mean, if you give a team that's really physical, really disciplined, and and believes in in what the coaches are preaching, you're going to have success. And and uh, so uh, just it's fun because we've been on crossover tape with these guys all year. So we've seen them against everybody, uh, and against everybody, uh, they look like the better team. They really do. Even the Oklahoma and, and Texas game and stuff, and I know they beat Texas, they look like uh, a team that uh, belongs and, and should win the game. And, and so uh, just tremendous amount of respect for what they've done there. With that win that you had on Saturday, you are the winningest first-year head coach in the Big 12. Uh, what, what level of pride do you take in that? You said that I didn't know it. Uh, it's it's pretty cool, I guess, for our staff. You know, I, I, once again, it's about all of us together that are doing this, and and uh, happy for. Uh, the results we talk about the process. Happy for some of those results to to show uh, to show out for our, our coaching staff. That uh, and, and I think it helps from a recruiting standpoint. It helps for our younger players. All those things to say, you know, we wanted growth in this first year. I, I, I nobody and we. If you ask, I never told you how many games we would win this first year. <laughs> We wanted growth and guys believing and getting better. And, and that's what I have seen from week one to uh, through week 11 now. And so I'm excited for uh, the future. Looking over the body of work, I mean, there's several statistics that really jump out about this team, but one that's uh, really uh, good is third down defense. Um, when you look at this group, what makes them so efficient and good at limiting the third down conversion? We work at it an awful lot. You know, we emphasize it. Um, you know, every team emphasizes it, but we emphasize it against our offense uh, a number of situations as well in practice. Um, it, it's 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 bitten us a few times too. You know, we there's some games where we haven't been as, as good on third down, and and uh, uh, it's cost us. Um, but with the style of offense we play, we have to get off the field on third down to give our offense a couple more possessions. Um, and, and to be able to methodically move the ball on offense uh, is, is a direct result of what we do on third down defense because just giving those guys an extra couple possessions, I, I think Coach Hayes and the defensive staff spend a lot. We watched third down this morning, spent an awful lot of time on third down uh, to see what our kids feel comfortable and confident playing, and then also the things that we think will work against this scheme. We have a lot of third down defense, uh, and so our ability to pick the right things and Scotty's ability to pick the right things that will uh, be efficient on Saturdays is a big part of that. And one last go around on Saturday, how important is third down defense going to be against the Cyclone? Yeah, I think they're, you know, we watched a huge cut up today of third and short and they're, you know, and it was it was a passing cut up and, and they're completing at a high, high rate and, and having great success with some crossing routes and some under routes. And uh, this is the by far the best group of tight ends that, that we've seen. The, they have great players at tight end uh, that block exceptionally well, that, that run really good routes, that 
catch the ball in traffic. They they are really talented guys, and uh, Purdy feels comfortable putting it in their framework and them going up and making plays. So we have to do a great job, obviously, on third down this week. A couple seniors, you know, playing their last home games here. First off, I know he hasn't been in the program obviously for a while, but James Gilbert. Going to get the opportunity to, to play in a bowl game this year. Mm -hmm. He's obviously brought a spark to the running game. Just kind of what has he meant, and how special is it to see him get this opportunity to play for a winning program this final year? Yeah, uh, James is a, is a super kid. As you guys have gotten to know him, he's got a smile on his face all the time. He's an energetic guy. Um, somebody that uh, I, people in his life that have impacted him, I know really well. And that's how James and I got hooked up. And so I, I'm excited for uh, all the people that have impacted James's life and uh, J James has been a great great addition to our team in his one year uh, I, I think the players uh, especially our seniors have really embraced him and, and so I'm excited for what he's done and, and for him to continue on this year also wanted to ask about Jordan Mitty just because he you know had that year last year where he kind of got his foot his feet wet at mm -hmm. the five level and Obviously, you guys have kind of sang his praises a lot this year. What has he meant to the defensive line? He's been a mainstay there. He's a phenomenal football player, a great, great kid to be around. Obviously, I've gotten to know his parents really well. And uh, Jordan's just had a, had a senior year that a kid wants to have where he's playing a ton, playing at a high level, being really productive. Um, the other senior defensive linemen love having him around uh, because he's, he's always got energy and uh, he's, his motor doesn't stop. And he's made impact play after impact play in, in every game. And uh, he's, his consistent play has allowed us to be really good on defense. Warm again, probably the second base rivalry. Do you think the team is as pumped up as they were maybe for the KU game? Uh, you know, they will be. I, I think it, it's a, he's still a lead up um, to each of these rivalry games. And, and um, you know, coming off of a, an emotional win over Texas Tech on the road uh, and, and getting back late, you know, it's going to be a gradual climb. But they, they know how good a football team uh, Iowa State is and the great matchups that uh, in talking to the seniors that we've had with Iowa State in their time here. You know, I'm learning about a lot of those as well as I go back and watch tape from previous games. Uh, but uh, it's been it's been a tremendous uh, game between the two institutions. And uh, I think both teams uh, are, are, are playing well. And, uh, you know, it's still going to come down to execution and not turning the football over and, and red zone success and all those things. In the spirit of a holiday, Thanksgiving, it isn't, you don't do it quite right without filling yourself with calories and carbs. What is the plan with the team eating that much two days before they before they came? Well, uh, we'll have, we're going to eat still, I promise you that. Um, we'll have a, a Thanksgiving meal uh, with the guys on Wednesday night, and then uh, uh, we'll practice earlier on Thursday, and a, a number of kids will, will have the opportunity to, to go home on Thursday afternoon. Uh, it's neat because we have so many Kansas kids that uh, will take some of the out-of-staters with them uh, and spend some time with, uh, you know, um, families, and, and we'll have... Uh, the rest of them that can't, uh, we'll take them as coaches. Um, but then they'll they'll be back here on Friday afternoon, and we'll start late Friday afternoon. Start our, our normal routine uh, for a six o'clock game. But um, you know, it's uh, it, we have a ton to be thankful for, uh, obviously, and um, just being around these guys. And it's cool because one one of the things that I don't one of the things that I like to do. Don't know if it's done in the past. It doesn't matter. But I have senior talks the last uh, couple weeks of, uh, of practices, and the seniors uh, get to come up in front of the team and, and just give a message to their teammates, to the, to the younger guys, and about their time here. And it's, it's pretty impactful for me just to listen to them because I hear some stories about what, it, what their path and journey has been here, as well as the great message they give to the freshmen about, uh, you know, it's never as bad as you think it is. It's pretty fortunate that you're part of Kansas State football and uh, embrace the time because it does go really fast.
uh, Cody Fletcher from the first time this year had the third most snaps at linebacker. Did you kind of perceive that big of a role for him Saturday? And then how did he play? Yeah, yeah, we knew we were going to play him an awful lot because of the tempo and the amount of plays we were going to play. And I think this is as healthy as Cody has been since before he got hurt in mid mid August. And so Cody's a really good football player that I'm. Sad he didn't get a chance to have his full full junior year. He made a number of tackles on kickoff as well on Saturday, which tells me he is healthier because he's able to run down on kickoff and make some plays and then make some plays on defense. And so uh, it, it's it's helped us because there's no way DQ was going to be able to play that many plays in that kind of a tempo offense. And and so uh, excited for Cody and know that uh, you know, he just needs those snaps to to get more and more confidence. Coach, you want guys to play promotion, but how and where do you draw the line on just saying, hey, this is too much? Yeah. Thinking more in terms of Lance Robinson and how emotional. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's just the fine line is is celebrating with your teammates and not making it about yourself and, and we talk about that um, but l- let's let's be honest you watch football on Sunday and it's it's that's what the game has become at that level and we know that kids watch that and we know that that kids are excitable and we want the energy we want the emotion whether it's 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 a player making a great sack uh, you know and why it shows great emotion too uh, or or just Josh on the long kick return, we, we just got to do it more with the team. But uh, absolutely, it, it's an emotional game, and, and let's let them have some fun, too. We just – we can't – yeah, there's a there's a line in the sand that we can't pass and draw. Coach, Brees Hall is a true freshman running back at Iowa State. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seems like he's picking up an honor uh, just about every week from the Big 12. In, in, uh, in-state prospect that held an offer from K-State. I know you were hired after. He yep. Did, but Man, what jumps off the screen to you uh, in Brees Hall? Uh, Great balance. Uh, tremendous uh, physical toughness running through arm tackles and stuff. Um, Has obviously wasn't playing a bunch early in the season and all of a sudden the more reps he's gotten the better he has become a uh, really talented player and uh, we'll have our hands full um, trying to corral him it is especially because of all the weapons they have thrown the football he's been a big benefit to that and, and he's he's made the most of it and so uh, we, we obviously have to try to control and limit some of his explosive plays great player so can we get an update uh, quickly on Malik and, and all of those guys? Yeah, there's a good chance all those guys will be able to play. Uh, it, nobody practiced yesterday, but they were all out there moving around with our training staff. Uh, and so I, I'm confident that the two that uh, would be Malik and Walt that, that came out of the game, a um, couple other guys got nicked up but um, should be able to play as well. I'll, I'll probably know more on, on Wednesday. Uh, we'll limit some guys today. Um, but I'm more encouraged by it than I was probably on Saturday evening. Another multi-sack performance for Wyatt. How much has he meant to this defense? He's been tremendous. He's been uh, a guy that uh, has had an impact on every game. He's made um, great strides as the season's gone on. His technique is so good. He's so physical, and he's got a motor, you know, that that just doesn't stop. And and that's we've made a lot of mistakes on defense, uh, and why it's a great example of our entire defense of making mistakes but playing so hard, you're able to overcome them. And uh, uh, why it was huge in in critical situations in the fourth quarter and that's still a credit to us revolving that door at the defensive line through four quarters so a kid like Wyatt can stay fresh enough in the fourth to make a couple big plays. And how much has Josh meant to the special teams unit? Josh Youngblood, uh, shoot, he's a, he's an electric kid. He can flat fly. He's got a knack, and kickoff returns are a knack uh, of being slow to it and then hitting it at the right time and and understanding where your blocks are at. Uh, and then he's just got that second gear. And let's give Ross Elder a ton of credit because man, did Ross do a great job of setting up the block, maintaining the block, and not, never giving up on the play. A lot of people made great blocks on that, but the one that sticks out to me is Ross uh, allowing him to get in the end zone. Coach, another thing on Young, but with what he's done this year with three more years remaining, can you say of what you can see of him accomplishing that? Yeah, Josh needs to get bigger and stronger. 
uh, and he knows it. He needs to put some weight on, uh, and, and he's missing out with what a lot of the freshmen aren't, which is a year of development with Coach Dawson. And so this will be a really big off season for Josh uh, to put on some weight, to put on some strength so that uh, you know he can hold a, a much higher weight so that he can stay durable on things. He's not like he's not been durable, but I just think he'll be better with 10 or 15 pounds on to him. Uh, but uh, he's learning so much from Dalton Schoen. He's learning so much from uh, Malik and, and Joaquin about how to run routes and how to be precise on that. And so um, I'm really excited about his future. Obviously, for a true freshman to do the things that he has done is pretty, pretty cool to have and, and excited for his next three years with us. You had really good tight ends in your career. Um, when you look at Charlie Kohler, is he the prototype tight end in your uh, in your philosophy and how you look at things and what are the, the I guess some of the finer points, the little things that maybe yeah. Joe Sixpack doesn't see that a guy like that. Yeah, yeah, he's he is the prototype tight end you want in in uh, uh, a style of offense that they run as well as is that we run uh, as somebody that can be. Uh, at the point of attack and, and block a defensive end, whether it's uh, in the run game or, or pass game, he can flex out uh, and be a, a single receiver on his side, uh, or he can be in the slot and create matchup problems with safeties. Obviously, he does with corners on the outside, and he's got such He's got really good speed, and his catch radius is so is so big. And then he's in the backfield too. He's he's a move guy that can that can kick out a a, a split zone or, or or do a little bit of everything. And so, you know, they use him in so many different ways that you could count him as a wide receiver. But if you do that, you're going to be short in the box. And so, uh, and they have you know they're playing three guys. They're in some thirteen personnel with with three tight ends and lining up in all sorts of formations. And that's a something that um, you know our defense luckily sees during fall camp and during spring ball uh, so we at least have a have an idea and a plan because it's something we have to face ourselves coach you mentioned it in the open uh, but you know a lot of these kids came to k-state for, for bill snyder uh, how impressive is it for for a bunch of some of these guys teenagers to, to adjust to something something like a coaching change and i guess what does that mean to you personally <laughs> Well, it's meant everything to me because a lot of those kids have already graduated and you're allowed to grad transfer. Um, and they did not grad transfer because of coach leaving or because of me coming in. I think they all stuck together for each other. And that's the thing that's the neatest thing for me is those guys have such a special bond. And I see it every day in the locker room, out on the practice field. They weren't going to leave their brothers. And that's why I have such a special place for those guys. Yeah, it, it will be our first team. And, and they're, you know, they were the first group that had this coaching staff. Uh, but I look at it as those guys stuck together. And uh, whether there was difficult times, great times, it doesn't matter. Those guys said, we're going to go out together. And that's pretty cool. You don't see that in college football as many fifth-year seniors as we have here. And, and that's a, a, it, let's credit those kids because they're the ones that stuck together. On the subject of tackling, there have been at times where maybe somebody in your secondary or linebacker, instead of grabbing somebody or putting a helmet across the body, would lower a shoulder mm -hmm. and knock him over. Yep. Do you consider that a type of form tackle, or is that more of a bad habit? That's an awful habit that we're trying to break on a daily basis. And uh, we've gotten tons better at it, uh, tons better from early in the year. And it's something that we're working on. Mm -hmm. But you also got to understand the NCAA rules. How much can we really tackle in practice? Like today, it, you know, you can't go out and tackle those kids. They're, they're still beat up. And, and you really have that about the last five or six weeks, especially since we've been on this run uh, for seven weeks. It's something that we've put in the back of our mind that we're going to adapt and adjust to this winter and this spring to reteach it because some of it is a, a habit. Maybe they've, they've done it since high school or maybe they did it last year. I don't know. But it's something that uh, we have to move forward and get away from because the, the players are too good in this league. They're going to bounce off people. And it's something that we, we will spend a, a bunch of time on making sure we get it corrected. One of the things why Huber said before the season uh, back this summer was that he wanted to be considered one of the best defensive ends in the Big 12. He's second in the Big 12 now in sacks. Where you sit here today, would you consider him to be a first-team All-Big 12 choice? 
I don't, I don't have those uh, <laughs> the crystal ball in front of me to say I get to select it and stuff. But, no, I think he's an all-conference type player without question. Um, we'll find that out here in the next couple weeks. But uh, um, he's, a, he's a tremendous football player that's really productive. And there's a lot of really good football players uh, that, for whatever reason, don't have the production. It seems like every week he has great production. And when I flip the film on, I look at certain guys in the league and say, how are we going to block that guy? Whether it's in the run game or in the pass game, how in the heck are we going to handle it? And I'll go to Mess and say, or Connor, and I'll say, how are we going to handle that kid? Because we just can't go one-on-one against this kid all day. I see that in Wyatt without question that, okay, how are they going to handle Wyatt? And, and if they don't chip him and do those other things or don't put a tight end to his side, he'll make some plays. Anything else? Are you a ham or a turkey guy? Uh, turkey. All right, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody have a great Easter. <laughs>